If you're looking for a place to go and find some trophies, this is the place to be in the charge of no fees. If you're on Xbox and need some game to score, come over here, I'll help you get some more. My name is Ken Retro, the host of the show, gaming news and reviews and all you need to know. Because the weekend is finally here at last, sit back, relax, enjoy the Trophy Achievement Podcast. Despite not doing my podcast for the last couple of months, because of them, because of my personal issues and I've been on hiatus. I'm back and uh, it's been been a tough old road. So I'm just going to get a couple of things out of the way first. Because I'm pretty sure I did games with gold for February. The games with gold, well, actually, PlayStation have the advantage, so it's one apiece. They go first. They've got Call of Duty, Mom, they had Call of Duty. They have Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered and The Witness. Um, And that's it because PlayStation no longer do free games for Xbox, uh, for uh, PlayStation 3 or PlayStation Vita. So a lot more pressure on their shoulders. But whereas over on Games with Gold, we've got Adventure Time and Plants vs Zombies Garden Warfare 2 on Xbox One. And then Star Wars Republic Commando, original Xbox. Um, an original Xbox game. And then Metal Gear Rising Revengeance. Which I've played, which I've, which I've played parts of and... My word, it's so good! Rules of nature! So, there we go. That's that taken care of. Now... Now, I think Xbox had the better lineup. Yes, you've got... Call of Duty Modern Warfare Remastered and The Witness, two stellar games. But Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, one of the first games by Platinum Games, and Star Wars Republic Commando. So, yeah, based on that, Xbox takes March, which means who's going to take April? We'll find out towards the end of the show. Anyway, hello my fellow lads, today Saints, Ken Z Retro here. Welcome back to the Trophy Achievement Podcast Season 2. Your one-stop shop for all the latest gaming news, gaming rumours, and of course, those sweet points and trophies. No points and trophies this week. We were going to do Assassin's Creed 3, but... That is not going to be happening because the achievements won't be out for Assassin's Creed 3 Remastered until tomorrow. We do have a lot of juicy news apart from that. So, we've got Breath of the Wild developers, Monolith, um, hiring for another Zelda project. 
Uh, Borderlands 3 teaser trailer has finally been released. We're finally getting Borderlands 3, people. Ain't no rest for the wicked. Uh, we've got a couple of articles on Pokemon Go. And we've got Kaz. We've got Kaz Hiray. Kaz, Kaz Hiray. Um, retiring from Sony. And we also had the news of Reggie fils retiring as president of Nintendo. We're going to have that as well. Um, it's the end of March, which means we're only a couple of months away from E3, and we've already got some E3 news regarding Ubisoft and when they're holding their press conference. Uh... George R. R. Martin and From Software apparently teaming up to work on a new game, which would be interesting. Um, and an article here on why people think Xbox will not win the next console generation. Uh, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order news on that, news on Death Stranding as well. Uh, and to finish off, we've got the Battle of the Free Games for April 2019. All that to come on the Trophy Achievement Podcast. And before we get into the news, I want to send a big shout out, as always, to Boomerang Rentals. Packages start from as little as $3.99 a month. Sign up today, get a 21-day free trial, and you get three free game rentals. There are no late fees. And you can keep the games as long as you like or keep them forever at a discounted price on the online store. Now, I've been using the service for just over two years now, and my word, the savings are astronomical. BoomerangRentals.co.uk, the best place to rent your games. Let's all laugh at an industry that never learns anything, tee hee hee. Ah, that little jingle. That means only one thing, ladies and gentlemen. It is time for our gaming screw-up of the week. And oh my word, shock and surprise to absolutely nobody, it's Electronic Arts once again! Why am I not surprised? What did they screw up this week? Ha ha ha. Oh boy. Now, let's have a look. EA lays off around 350 people. Now, why have they done this? Let's have a look. E Electronic Arts is laying off 350 people across its marketing, publishing, and operation team, operations teams, as well as reducing its presence in Japan and Russia. CEO Andrew Wilson announced the layoffs earlier this week. Wilson said that the publisher was taking important steps as a company to address our challenges and prepare for the opportunities ahead. Unfortunately, those changes will impact about 350 roles, which means 350 people will be laid off. The full statement is below. So, here we go. Today we took some important steps as a company to address our challenges and prepare for the opportunities ahead. As we look across the changing world around us, it's clear that we must change with it. We are making deliberate moves to better deliver on our commitments, refine our organization, and meet the needs of our players. <laughs> Since when have you met the needs of our players? Since when have you met the needs of the players? As part of this, we made changes to our marketing and publishing organization, our operation teams, and we are ramping down our current presence in Japan and Russia. Well, that's two big markets out the window, which means less revenue. Ha 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 ha. As we focus on different ways to serve our players in those markets. In addition to organizational changes, we are deeply focused on increasing the quality of our games and services. <sighs> no, it's not. Great games will continue to be at the core of everything we do. No, it's not. And we are thinking differently about how to amaze and inspire our players. Nope. This is a difficult day. The changes we're making today will impact about 350 roles in our 9,000 person company. These are important but very hard decisions and we do not take them lightly. We are friends and colleagues at EA. 
We appreciate and value everyone's contributions and we are doing everything we can to ensure we are looking after our people to help them through this period to find their next opportunity. This is our top priority. No, your top priority is to try and steal as much money from us as possible so that you can continue to put in loot boxes and microtransactions in all of your games. Oh wait, you can't do that in Belgium anymore. Earlier this year, Activision Blizzard let go of hundreds of employees, area nets laid off an unknown number of people, and Telltale closed its games, closed its doors for good in November. It's an unpleasant and certain time. Now, I read elsewhere that the reason why these changes are happening is because their earnings have been taking a hit. So, karma is a... Okay, let's keep it PG for the youngsters watching. So yeah, screw you EA, you've only got yourselves to blame. The fact that you've laid staff off, trying to cut your losses, more like trying to make losses. Everything in that statement is nothing but... Okay, Kenzie. Keep it PG, damn it! So, yeah, screw you, EA. Karma is. Keep it PG. Can you keep it PG? Come on! Focus! I love it when Karma strikes EA because all it does is cause me to laugh in their face. <laughs> you only have yourselves to blame, EA. Anyway, on to the main portion of the program. So here we go. Monolith Soft, the creator of Xenoblade, the Xenoblade series, like Xenoblade Chronicles, and co-development studio of Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, is hiring for a new Zelda project. On a Zelda-themed recruitment page, as spotted by Japanese Nintendo, Monolith says it's looking for technical artists, programmers, planners, designers, and a project manager. No hint is given as to what the project Zelda project would be. Simply asking for staff who can help create new surprises and emotions. Monolith previously contributed to Zelda Skyward Sword, helping with artistic and graphical elements. However, its work on Breath of the Wild centered on level design for the open world, particularly with regard to topography. Over 100 Monolith staff were part of the Breath of the Wild development process. That varying work makes it tough to guess what kind of game it might be assisting with. Although Monolith's interest and expertise in open worlds is a possible pointer, late last year, Nintendo itself began hiring for a Zelda project, if Monolith is working with Nintendo in a similar capacity to previous projects, it could be a signal that this is the next mainline Zelda game. While we begin with int interminable, while we begin the interminable wait for whatever t that turns out to be, we at least have some other new Zelda goodness to dig into. This year we'll see the link release of Link a Link's wait blah. This year we'll see the release of a Link's Awakening remake, The Cave and Cadence of Hyrule, a crossover between the Zelda series and Crypt of the Necrodancer, which stands as the first ever indie developed Zelda game. There's also on the ongoing rumours as to a Legend of Zelda, Zelda mobile game, but we've had no official word on that. Hmm. Very interesting. Now, I doubt, I plan, I'm going to have a Switch by the end of the year, folks. I'm going to have, I'm going to have a Switch by the end of the year, which means I can play Kirby, I can play Zelda, I can play Mario, I can play Super Smash Brothers! And of course I can play Kirby. Ha ha! THE CUTEST TAUNT EVER! While I'm waiting on that... Right, so...
And there we go, finally. Took them long enough to load. So, Borderlands 3 teaser trailer has been released. So, here we go. Again, once it decides to load. Okay, so while we're waiting on the video to load, eventually, After numerous teasers, Gearbox Software has seemingly announced a new Borderlands game is coming to PAX East and released a short teaser trailer for it. While the video, which you can see once it eventually loads, doesn't outright state it is for Borderlands 3 specifically, it certainly looks to be an entirely new entry in the loot-based shooter series. The teaser, which is titled Mask of Mayhem, takes the viewer through a, through a kind of diorama in which characters and familiar looking enemies are posed in a way that builds intrigue around what the game could be about. It also teases some of the hijinks players will get into. It opens with a shot of Psycho's prostrating before a very large gun-wielding character who himself is flanked by a statue of an angelic figure holding an upside-down version of Borderlands' iconic vault symbol. As the camera moves seemingly through and around other scenarios, we get to see a dragon, a character shooting from a buggy, a bunch of figures giving each other jumping high fives, a robot ninja, and plenty undercut swept over his hairstyles. As the teaser reaches its conclusion, it pulls out from the madness to reveal that it was all the tapestry of the iconic mask the psycho enemies wear. Although there's new, new no gameplay, Gearbox is expected to show more of this new Borderlands at PAX at its PAX East panel on March 28th. Oh my word, that's today! That panel will be streamed online today. The event begins at 11 a.m. Pacific Time, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 6 p.m. GMT, which is UK time, and 5 a.m. Australian time on March 29th, which is tomorrow. And of course, GameSpot will be at hand to bring you the news from the panel. Stay tuned for whatever announcements may come from the event. Now, I'm actually going to source the video from elsewhere. So, here we go. Ooh, okay. Okay, I, okay, I def, okay, I like this. I like the look of this. I definitely like the look of this. Wait, is that Marcus Phoenix? Did I just see Marcus Phoenix in a Borderlands game?
I could have sworn I just saw Marcus Phoenix. He had a similar build to him, absolutely. But my word, that looks good. Now I muted the desktop, I had the desktop audio muted, so hopefully with... Hopefully with how loud my laptop was, my microphone should have been able to pick that up without much trouble. And the right, the next couple of articles are regarding Pokemon Go. So here we go. Pokemon Go Earth Day Campaign Brings Participation Awards. So here we go, this is what we've got. Niantic is hosting its second annual Earth Day Campaign, partnering with Playmob and 15 NGOs to host cleanup events. Niantic is aiming to increase its impact with more cleanup events with communities around the world. Depending on how many players participate, Various rewards will be unlocked, such as increased appearance ground type Pokemon spawns, shiny Diglett, and double Stardust and Candy for event spawns, and Groudon in raids. Short, sweet, and to the point. And talking of events, we've got another event coming out on April 2nd. Bug Out event announced. So here we go. This is what we've got. Bug Out is a special bug-themed Pokemon Go event that takes place from April 2nd, 2019 at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time to April 9th, 2019 at 1 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. During the event, but the bug type Pokemon will appear more frequently in the wild. Incense will last twice as long and more Pokemon will appear when using incense. A set number of limited time bug, bug type themed field research will be available. No new shiny Pokemon have been confirmed as of yet. Interesting. Very interesting. And we've got our next Community Day event announced in the form of Bagon being the latest Community Day Pokemon. The most recent Pokemon Go Community Day star in Trico just ended, which means the new star of the upcoming day has been announced. Bagon. The rock head... Pokemon will be spawning in abundance on Saturday, April 13th from 3pm until 6pm in your local time zone. Just like any other community day, lures placed during this time will also last for 3 hours. Catch XP will also be tripled, unless you have a luck hit, which means it will be multiplied by 6. Salamence is a pretty good attacker and is second best next to Dragonite on a list of non-legendary Dragon-type attackers by Game Press. 
Bag-ons are also pretty tough to come by, so if you need to stack your team of some more dragon types, make sure you mark your calendars for April 13th. We likely won't be seeing a Dragon Legendary in raids for a while after Dialga leaves, with the exception of the potential return of Latios to match his sister's last return in February. Reshiram and Zekrom are from the 5th generation, but it's never too early to start stacking some dragons on your team. Every dragon I catch is another step closer to getting my dragon badge. So, here we go. Two major pieces of news um, as far as people retiring are concerned. Here we go. Kai's Hirei, Kaz Hirei to retire from Sony. Sony Corporation Chairman Kazuo Ka Kaz Hirei, the former head of the company's PlayStation business, is retiring. Hirei will step down as chairman on June 18th, bringing his 35-year career, 35 career at Sony to a close. In a statement, Sony said Hirei will continue to provide counsel as requested by Sony's management team, acting as senior advisor for the company. Hirei was named chairman in 2018 after stepping down as president and CEO of Sony in April. Since pa passing the baton of CEO to Yoshida San last April. As chairman of Sony, I've had the opportunity to both ensure a smooth transition and provide support to Sony's management. Hirei said in a statement, I am confident that everyone at Sony is fully aligned under Yoshida San's strong leadership and are ready to build an event an even brighter future for Sony. As such, I have decided to depart from Sony, which has been a part of my life for the past 35 years. I would like to extend my warmest gratitude to all our employees and stakeholders who have supported me throughout this journey. Hirei, who's 58, joined CBS slash Sony Inc, later Sony Music Entertainment Japan in 1984, where he worked in the marketing of international music in Japan. He, he joined Sony Computer Entertainment America, the PlayStation division, in 1995 and four years later was appointed President and Chief Operating Officer of Sony Computer in Entertainment America. In 2006, he took over Sony's video game business worldwide. He later became President of the Networked Products and Service group, Services Group at Sony Corporation and in 2011 assumed responsibility for all of Sony's consumer electronics products and services and its global software, sales, and marketing and design platforms. Well, 35 years in the business, a very well-earned retirement. And now, I will admit this next, this next one did, did have me a little teary-eyed. But nevertheless, this is Reggie fils saying goodbye to his fans. Whew. Now this was like way back in February, just over a month ago, well five weeks ago to be exact, but nevertheless, here we go. Hi Nintendo fans, Reggie here. By now you may have heard the news. Yep. I'm retiring. I wanted to reach out directly to you, the Nintendo community, because there's one thing I really want to say. Thank you. Thank you for your never ending support and for your passionate love of Nintendo. And personally, for giving me a mushroom kingdom full of incredible memories <laughs> that I will never forget, ever. 
From the first time I saw the nickname Reginator, <laughs> I realized that Nintendo fans share a unique sense of community, a bond that goes beyond just the love of video games. For these past 15 years, I've been honored to be included as part of your family. Just as you understand that Nintendo always tries to put smiles on faces, well, let me tell you, you put thousands of smiles on mine. As I head off in a couple of months to spend more time with my wife, my family, and my friends, I'm handing over the controller to Doug Bowser. In <laughs> April, Doug will become the new president of Nintendo of America. Doug is a passionate and powerful leader, and a guy who, in his youth, probably spent too much time in front of a Donkey Kong arcade machine. Inside Nintendo, people already know him as a driving force, and you'll come to see that too. And I ask you, with a name like Bowser, who better to hold the keys to the Nintendo castle? Exactly. Doug has a strong relationship with Mr. Furukawa and all the teams at NCL and NOE. So I know that together, our teams will continue to surprise and delight. You know me as a gamer, so you can probably understand how incredible it's been to work at Nintendo one of the signature experiences of my life. I leave in good health and good spirits, and believe me, my body is still ready. <laughs> in April, I'll be dropping the title that's meant so much to me, President of Nintendo of America, but I'll retain one that means even more, Nintendo fan. From the bottom of my heart, thanks again for everything. You are the best. I mean, need we say more beyond that? Doug Bowser? <laughs> that is just brilliant. And he, there was even a picture there of Reggie with Sakurai. Oh no, Shigeru Miyamoto. And of course, the late great Satoru Iwata. I mean, wow, that is beautiful. <sighs> body's still ready. To me, his body's always ready. <sighs> From Nintendo to Ubisoft, and Ubisoft's E3 2019 press briefing has been slated for June 10th. So it looks like we've got a date for Ubisoft's press conference. Question is... What's going to happen with everybody else? I mean, minus Sony, because that's huge, the fact that they're not going to be at E3 this year. Anyway, Nintendo will hold its annual E3 press briefing on Monday, June 10th, the publisher announced on Wednesday on Twitter. This year's show will begin at 1pm Pacific Daylight Time, which is Ubisoft's usual time slot, which will be 9pm over here in the UK. Ubisoft has not yet announced a venue for its E3 2019 showcase, but the company has held its press conference at the Orpheum Theatre in downtown Los Angeles for the, for the past few years. So I wouldn't be too surprised if they were still there this year. There are a few known quantities in Ubisoft's upcoming slate, and that could make the publisher's E3 press conference an exciting show with a number of surprises. Ubisoft said last year that it would give the Assassin's Creed franchise a break in 2019, which gives a which leaves a big hole in the company's fall release schedule. Skull and Bones, the, the open world pirate game from Ubisoft Singapore, may fill that gap. It seems safe to expect lots of details on the project at this year's E3. The only other announced Ubisoft game that will not have been released by E3 2019 is, of course, Beyond Good and Evil 2. We haven't seen much of the long, long, long gestating, long gestating project since the announcement at E3 2018 at, uh, of a content creation partnership with Hit Record, the sequel to a cult, the cult classic from 2003. It's a prequel though. They announced it as a prequel. 
Cult Classic from 2003 does not yet have a release window. Another far-off project is the Avatar video game that's in development at Massive Entertainment, the Ubisoft studio that just released Tom Clancy's The Division 2. And there continue, and there continue to be rumours and leaks swirling around the possibility of a third Watch Dogs game. Hmm. One thing we do know about Ubisoft's future is that the company is planning to at least planning to at least three to four AAA, AAA games in its 2019-2020 fiscal year, which ends March 20, 31st, 2020. Let the speculation begin! Now, if they do release a third Watch Dogs game, I'm definitely going to play it, don't get me wrong. So, here we go. Here we go. Uh, next up, Dark Souls and Game of Thrones, anybody? Now, why do I bring those two into the same sentence? Which creative alter has two thumbs and is obsessed with death? Trick question, it's two creative alters. Namely, George R. R. Martin, author of Game of Thrones, uh, technically a song of ice and fire, and Hideyataka Miyazaki, president of From Software and the man behind and the man behind Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. It's no wonder then that the pair are apparently teaming up for a new RPG video game, which could be making its grand reveal at E3 2019 in a few months' time. According to an investigative report from Spawnwave and Liam Robertson, From Software and George R.R. R. Martin are collaborating on a medieval open world game to be published by Bandai Namco, with the latter responsible for writing much with the latter responsible for writing much of the story and lore of this mysterious new IP. In the unannounced unnamed title, in the unannounced unnamed title, claims Robertson, your main character will be invading various kingdoms throughout the open world and killing the leaders within, subsequently gaining the unique powers of each in the process. Now, it's unclear who Spawnwave and Robertson are getting this intel from and whether there's any basis to the claim. But the latter does hold credibility as a reliable source for leaks. I'm on board with this. I'm on board with it. So here we go. Next up, we've got news on the next generation of gaming and people and people are claiming it's a fight that Xbox can't win. A reader considers Microsoft's options for the next generation of consoles and how they might fare against both Google and Sony. Has Microsoft already conceded the next generation console race in favour of broadening their audience? Although I don't believe Microsoft are necessarily resigned to losing, I certainly think they are fully prepared for that scenario. Xbox has altered the metrics of, for, for a while now, avoiding hardware sales figures hardware sales figures in favour of active users. Therefore, I can't help but think Microsoft's strategy derives more from circumstance than by design. If the roles were reversed and Xbox was on top this generation, would they be so eager to get Xbox onto multiple devices? I suggest their situation has at least hastened their plans. The counter to this theory is the threat Google, Stat Google Stadia now poses, which Microsoft obviously saw coming and gives validations to their shift in focus. Whether live streaming is a viable alternative to playing natively on a console is another debate. With too many questions unanswered at this stage, until the service is out in the wild, contending with various internet speeds, not to mention pricing, only then will we discover how much of a threat Google pose. It's the future, no doubt, but is the gaming industry equipped and ready? 
more importantly, are the gamers? I'm not so sure. There's too many variables to consider. Microsoft, meanwhile, whilst keen to promote xCloud, will continue to provide consoles for the foreseeable future. It's clear getting Xbox onto as many devices as possible is the long-term plan. It could be argued that their latest philosophy is an admission they can't compete directly with Sony in the console space alone. When you consider the respective wealth of each company, it's almost absurd to suggest Xbox can't compete. Whatever their real motivation, it's at least interesting to see both Microsoft and Sony differentiate themselves in their respective plans. Not all Xbox fans are going to be pleased by their aspirations for growth, however, which some will complain dilutes the brand. From a personal perspective, somebody playing the same game on another platform is of no consequence, though it, un though it undoubtedly diminishes the need to purchase a console when there's alternatives available. Microsoft are perfectly fine with this situation as long as you're invested into their ecosystem. I don't think they care whether it's Xbox, PC or other formats. It's the other formats aspect which has raised some eyebrows though. The, with Switch recently touted and dare I say almost inevitable. Whilst I don't envisage a scenario remotely like the start of this generation, it seems obvious Sony's more traditional stance will again reap its rewards. It was a major factor back in 2013 and I'm sure it will be in 2020. Sony are in the enviable position to, of being able to continue where they left off. With not a great deal to improve upon, the hardware will be more capable of course, along with a successor to PlayStation VR, but in terms of games, aside from a strong multiplayer offering, they've most bases covered. In my view, this generation of consoles was a significant one to lose. It's safe to assume Sony will offer backwards compatibility for PS4 games, and the x86 console architecture dictates it will be much easier to implement, and a no-brainer incentive. Couple this with the fact that digital sales are considerably higher, having customers already invested into an ecosystem takes on greater significance. It also comes down to form. With our number of highly acclaimed exclusives on offer, God of War, Horizon Zero Dawn, Spider-Man, Detroit Become Human, Last of Us, uh, among many others, with uh, PS PlayStation has the complete Kingdom Hearts collection. Xbox only has Kingdom Hearts three. You have a fan base which is going to be extremely difficult to budge. So, yeah, we'll leave it at that. That is very interesting though, the fact that it's very interesting the fact that they think the next console generation is going to be one that Xbox lose. Which, like I say, I think that's very interesting that they've made that prediction. But hey ho, who knows? We'll wait and see what happens. Two more articles before we get into the battle of the free games. Right, so we've got um, news on Death Stranding. The waters are still murky is the subheading. What is Death Stranding about? Even after a deeper dive showcase at E3 2018, it's almost impossible to say. Broadly sci-fi featuring elements of trippy horror, the first game from Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima's new studio looks set to meld the technical future trappings of the Metal Gear series with his own mind-bending Silence Hill horror too. But at this point, it's almost 
entirely conjecture. Sony and Kojima are playing up to the mysterious nature of the game, letting very few details be revealed. As the game from Kojima Studios, there's a lot riding on its success, and the PR campaign to drum up interest is already creating a fever pitch of anticipation. After his well-publicized departure from Konami, Kojima announced Death Stranding at Sony EP 2016 presentation and made something of a massive impression. That entrance though? Oh my word, that was so cool! Hello? Hello everyone. I'm back. Thank you. While entering the gaming planet tries to piece together the breadcrumb trail to find out what exactly we're all waiting for, let this article guide you through everything there is to know about Death Stranding so far. Right. Um Tokyo Game Show. So there's no release. There's no release date. There's no release date, and we'll just take it from there. So here we go. Hold on to your lightsabers. There's a new Star Wars game in development, and it's called Jedi Fallen Order. The reveal came in a surprisingly low-key fashion during EA's conference at E3 2018, during an off-the-cuff interview with Vince Zambella, co-founder of Respawn Entertainment of Titanfall fame. The next time we'll see the game will be the Star Wars Celebration event held in Chicago from April 11th to April 15th. To that end, a special Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order panel will be held on Saturday, April 13th, with more, where more will be revealed during, before the game's late 2019 release date. While fans of the Galactic franchise have seen official tie-ins in the form of Star Wars Battlefront 1 and 2, both of which were very disappointing, the new entry seems to be taking a different tack, possibly focusing on a single player experience more in line with 2008's The Force Unleashed. And make sure you STICK to it being single player! But we all have the concrete news and wild speculations, yada yada yada. Oh boy. Two words. NOT INTERESTED! They have not learned from their previous mistakes. So. The reason I'm not interested is because... I have other Star Wars games I would much rather be playing. Such as... One of our free games for April 2019. It's the Battle of the Free Games, Xbox versus PlayStation, for April 2019. So here we go. Since Xbox took March at the beginning of the show, it is time for them to start for April. And what games do they have on offer this month? Well, for next month. So anyway. So 
So here we go, we've got our first one on Xbox One. Uh, the Technomancer, this is going to be interesting. If you've missed mid-2000s Bioware games, check out the Technomancer. The game is relatively straight, a relatively straightforward action RPG with copious skill trees and rich, diverse environments. It's not quite up to par with the world of Jade Empire or Mass Effect, but it's not a bad entry in the genre. And then you've got Outcast Second Contact. While the original Outcast is probably best known for, the introdu for introducing gamers to the concept of an open world, we have Outcast Second Chance to thank for overhauling the graphics and bringing a level of modern polish to the game. Unfortunately, not everything was updated in the remastering, so prepare accordingly. And now, on the on the uh, 360 front, uh, it's also available on, it's an original Xbox game, backwards compatible on 360, and it is now available on Xbox One as of April 1st. Not an April Fool's joke, by the way, folks. Star Wars Battlefront 2. Wait, hold up, hold up! Take your hands away from the keyboard and listen. This is not the Star Wars Battlefront 2 that was plagued by microtransactions. This is the real Battlefront 2. Galactic Conquest mode. Need I say more? One of the best split-screen multiplayer games since GoldenEye or Time Splitters. The original Pandemic Star Wars. Not the real Star Wars Battlefront 2 by Pandemic Studios was a masterpiece of its era. The game featured battles in both prequel and original Star Wars trilogies, and added new heroes and ship combat. For a younger generation that missed the game its first go around, it's definitely worth downloading this month. And you've got Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2. Wait a minute. Wait just a minute. Of course! Oh my word. Oh my god. Goodness me. One of the toughest achievements to get in video gaming history. World Champion. Climb to the top of the Universal Leaderboard. You've basically got to be number one in the world. Wow. When it was released, Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Advanced Warfighter 2, commonly referred to as... G Raw 2 was the pinnacle of the tactical shooter genre. Suck it, Rainbow Six! The set pieces had the feel of modern day a modern day Call of Duty, and the multiplayer was some of the best of its time. A worthy replay. Hmm, hang on. Oh, the world champion achievements only in the first Warfighter. Well, here we go. Let's have a look at what we've got. We've got Conan Exiles, an open world survival game from Funcom, was originally released as an early access title in January 2017. Its public launch on PlayStation 4, Windows PC and Xbox One came in May 2018. The game is perhaps most notable for allowing people to play as nude characters and own slaves. Oh boy, that don't sit too well. The Surge is the second game on offer. It is an action role-playing game from German studio Deck 13 Interactive. Released in May 2017 on PC, PS4 and Xbox One, it's a spiritual successor to the studio's Dark Souls-esque game, Lords of the Fallen. 
from oh um hmm. I'm a little concerned about Conan Exiles based on that. Um Surge mm. This one goes to Xbox. So that's three one. Xbox three, PlayStation one. Oh my word. Oh, the irony of that. Anyway, that's it for this week, folks. Hope you enjoyed what we saw. If you did, as always, hit the thumbs up. And if you want to be baptized into following this channel, hit the subscribe button down at the bottom. Click the bell to join the latter day series notification squad so you don't miss anything I do on this channel. Support me on Patreon if you want to. Patreon.com slash Kenzie Retro, where you can get early access to my podcast. Alongside some other little videos as well. Previous video on the left, playlist on the right. I'll see you guys again very soon. Until then, enjoy the rest of your day. Peace out. Stay faithful as always.